Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name's Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. So I am back today with the swatching video. Um, this was going to be a swatch and a demo painting video, but then I looked at everything that needs to be swatched and realised I'm probably not going to have enough time to put this all into one video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch everything today in this particular video and then there'll be a video following this one where I'm going to do a demo slash my first time painting with gouache video because it's literally my first time painting with gouache. I'm going to be uh, swatching them today so these are actually all the paints, all the gouache paints laid out there. There's 22 of them which is more than I realised but anyway <laughs> we're going to be swatching those. The only mistake I made was when I was doing this swatch card I didn't leave enough space to write the names of the colours underneath so what I'll probably do is wait for it to dry and then go over it with a black pen and write the names of the colours on top of them but as I go through and swatch them I will tell you what each of the colours are. I have all the tubes out here in front of me um, but you may or may not be able to see that particularly well on the camera. Um, I may sort of rejig the setup a little bit and zoom you guys in to actually see the swatches a bit more close up when we actually get to that part. Um, then I also have some watercolours to swatch, uh, Sennelier oil pastels, uh, pastel pencils, some watercolour pencils and more like pastel pencils, Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2s and this water soluble graphite stick as well. So we have a lot to go through today um, and like I said I will give you names and pigment info if I have it as we go along. The brush I'm going to be using mostly is going to be this. It's it's a very inexpensive De La Rowney Simply Flat uh, size 6, it's kind of like a craft or student grade brush, really inexpensive and uh, yeah so I used my watercolour workbook stamp set and ink, <laughs> you don't need to see the ink but this is from Irit Langraf. I have a dedicated video where I go through and play around with this stamp set so I will link that below in the description box if you'd like to go and check that out. Then. For paper that I'm using today is a combination of things. Um, this is just my other little swatch card for the pencils and pastels. Um, so this smaller piece of paper is this Clairefontaine paint-on um, mixed media paper. It's, it's a fairly smooth surface. So I showed in the haul that I got the textured one of the same, it's basically the same version of this paper, just a textured version. This is uh, a smoother version. So. That's the one I'm using for the pastels and the pencils. Um, and then my main paper underneath here, this swatch card that I've made up, is just Canson XL watercolour paper. It's just cheap cellulose paper. Um, it's great for swatching and just trying out stuff and practicing. Um, so yeah, and it's fairly inexpensive, so it's great for things like this where you don't want to waste your expensive papers. And then what I'm also going to do with the gouache is not only swatch it on the white paper, I have put black lines down to check the opacity, but I also want to go ahead and swatch it on the black paper. I probably won't film me swatching it on black paper, but I will show you what it looks like at, at the end. I'll do that probably off camera or if I do film it, it'll be like a sped up time lapse just so this video won't be super, super long. Okay, so with all that said, I will have links to everything below this video. Now most of you, if you saw the haul video, you'll know that I purchased most of these from my local art shop because um, here in the UK, lockdown restrictions have started easing and a couple of weeks ago, um, we were able to go into shops again, <laughs> like non-essential shops were allowed to open again. And so I wanted to go support my uh, local art shop because they're quite, I mean, they're small. It's a small local business, a family owned business and they've been around for a long time and I wanted to support them. So a lot of these products, actually all these products can also be purchased online. So I will link online sources for all of these. Um, some of the gouache paints I purchased secondhand from eBay. Um, but again, I will put links to everything. I will list out all the color names that I have and then just put links to the different brands. There's two main brands here that I have. So I'll just put links to both of them. Uh, most of the links below this video are affiliate links and all that means is if you click on one of these links and then go ahead to purchase something whether it's the actual item that was linked or something else on that website then I just get a small commission. It doesn't cost you anything extra, it helps me out and um, and yeah it's just a way to help support this channel without it costing anything extra. But having said that, equally don't feel like you have to go ahead and buy anything. You really don't need to. 
Uh, I also wanted to say, and I forgot to mention this in the haul video, is I, I realise that this is a little bit excessive. No one needs this much stuff. But for one thing, I'm a grown up and I can spend my money on what I like. And secondly, um, it's been a pretty stressful <laughs> period of time in my life right now. I can't really talk about it at the moment, but hopefully soon. And um, and yeah, this these little things make me happy. So there we go. <laughs> All the disclaimers aside, if you do have any questions, please let me know. If you like these types of videos, please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment and subscribe if you haven't already, because that really helps me out as well. All right, so let's start with the gouache. Now I know with gouache, sometimes it's called like an opaque watercolor because it kind of is, it acts a lot like watercolor, but it's a lot more of an opaque medium. And you can actually water it down and use it like a what you know as a thinner consistency like watercolor but in my mind if I was going to do that I would just use watercolor so my plan is to use wash fairly opaque when I do decide to use it so that's how I'm going to paint my swatches all right so that first color was permanent white by Dale Rowney and that's done a really good job of covering up the black uh, line underneath it uh, I would probably do a second layer to make sure it's really, really opaque and covered up completely, but for a first pass, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to try the same permanent white, but this time it's Windsor & Newton. This one's even more opaque. That's pretty much completely covered up that black line, even more so than the Dale Rowney. We'll see how they dry, because they might not dry as opaque as they look right now. Okay, then next up we have primary yellow. Now this one isn't super opaque, but a lot of the time with gouache you need to actually mix it with a white to make it super opaque. Then we have primary yellow deep. This one's also by Winsor & Newton. That's primary yellow deep. And I use the Sharpie to write the, to draw the lines. Next up we have orange lake light, also by Winsor & Newton. That one's pretty opaque. That one's done a good job of covering up that black line. Next up we have Spectrum Red by Winsor & Newton. That one's also fairly opaque. And then we have Alizarin Crimson by uh, Winsor & Newton. It's a beautiful, deep, sort of cool leaning red. Next up we have Venetian Red, also by Winsor & Newton. So this is Venetian Red by Winsor & Newton. This one's very opaque. And even as a watercolour, Venetian Red is a fairly opaque colour, so I expected that one to do well. <laughs> Next up we have Rose Pink, and this is by Dela Rowney. That's not done too badly, it's not super opaque, but pretty good. And next up we have Magenta, also by Dela Rowney. We have Sap Green by Winsor & Newton. That's pretty opaque. That was a really good job of covering up that line. I do like it. I do kind of wish it was a tad bit more on the warmer side, but that's easily remedied by adding a bit of red or a bit of orange or yellow to warm it up a little bit. Powder Blue by Dela Rowney. If I'm not mistaken, this one already has some white mixed into it. So it should be pretty opaque. Yep, that's pretty opaque. It's almost like a periwinkle or lavender blue type. Slightly more blue than lavender, but like a cornflower blue. All right, next up we have Primary Blue by Winsor & Newton. This is like a phthalo. That's doing a pretty decent job. But yeah, it is a bit more on the transparent side. And the one thing I'm going to have to get used to with gouache, and a lot of um, people who transition to gouache from watercolour say the same thing, is figuring out the consistency to get a nice flat wash. Even with these swatches, I can tell that they're not super... The consistency's not always spot on with the swatches, but it's fine, we're playing around. And next up we have Ultramarine, also by Winsor & Newton. And again, that's doing a pretty decent job of covering up that line. Oh, one thing I haven't mentioned is this 
pad that I'm using here. It's a disposable palette. Um, so it's like these slightly plastic coated pages that you can put your paint on. Typically it's used for, used a lot for like acrylics and oils and stuff like that so that at the end you can just tear off the page and throw it away. Now it's not the most eco-friendly thing in the world and I wouldn't personally go out and buy one but um, recently my, my in-laws were, are moving and they were going through their stuff and my mother-in-law gave me a box of random art and craft supplies and um, I went through them and like there was a few things in there that I kept and one of the things was this little pad of like tear off palettes so since I had it I will use it but it's not something I would go out and purchase I would not recommend you go out and purchase just because it's fairly wasteful and because it's plastic coated you can't really recycle it so yeah take, you know do what you will with that but I would rather use a ceramic plate. I just pick up these plates. I've got a few of them that I picked up from the pound shop here in the UK. So very inexpensive, but reusable. And ceramics a really nice surface for mixing on. So this next color is Prussian blue. This is one of my favorite shades of blue. And it can be this really dark, inky, almost like indigo color. And obviously that's very dark right now, so it's covering up that line nicely. But it also washes out to a really lovely light blue. It's just, it's just a favorite of mine. Right, so next up we have um, Flesh Tint by De La Rowney. And I'm not a fan of that name because, I don't know, it's maybe a good base to create a skin tone, but it's definitely not a skin tone on its own, at least not for everybody. It's just like a really pale, peachy sort of color and it's fairly opaque because I know it's made using quite a bit of white. Next up we have Naples Yellow also by Winsor & Newton this time and again this one is in watercolors anyway Naples Yellow is a fairly opaque color so I imagine this will do quite well in the opacity department and yep it's definitely opaque. Now we're moving into our earth tones. We've got Ye Yellow Ochre by De La Rowney. Okay, that's still fairly thick. Ah! I swear that's why I always end up doing is dropping my paintbrush into whatever. Let's try this again. All right, Yellow Ochre. That's fairly good. And then we have Burnt Sienna also by De La Rowney. That's lovely opaque brown burnt umber by Dale Ra oh by Winsor and Newton this time jet black by Winsor and Newton which there would be something very wrong if this didn't cover up the black line and lastly we have silver by Winsor and Newton this was one of those ones that came with uh, the bundle I got from eBay is wouldn't be one I would purchase myself but you know what actually having said that it's a really nice opaque silver colour so that'd be quite nice for like finishing touches and stuff on a painting here we go so what the finished swatches look like they're still most of them are still drying you can see that you can see the glisten on them but but yeah it's a really nice sort of range of colours actually as it turns out I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these in the black book and then I'm gonna go move on to the next pieces. Okay, back now with uh, clean water and I've squeezed out the little dollops of each colour for the watercolours that we're going to test out. The Sennelier one had quite a bit of binder separation in it, but that's fine, it's still workable. Um, so we're going to start out with Sennelier, um, it's Caput Mortem, it's PR101. Caput 
but Mortem is a fairly opaque colour. It's quite granulating as well. See that's already starting to show up quite strongly. Next up we have Winsor & Newton's version which is Kaput Mortuum Violet. That's also PR101. Then we have Winsor & Newton Mars Black. This one again is a it's PBK11. It's a very granulating black when added to a lot of water. Then we have this is from a limited edition line or a it was like a uh, what's it like a special release type of colour? It's called Aqua Green. It doesn't actually have a pigment number on the back for some reason, but it's just a really lovely colour. I've always wanted to try it out. So this reminds me of the Daniel Smith Thalo Turquoise. It's a slightly more sort of like greeny turquoise colour, which I guess. Explains the name Aqua Green. And finally, we have Schmincke, Schmincke's Indigo, which is the only indigo I've come across or tried so far that doesn't have a black pigment in it. So I was very interested to try that out. It's a lovely inky blue. Right, so those are the watercolours. I can save this and use the rest of that paint later those look like they're really lovely colors they actually go quite nicely together it's like a quite a moody sort of little palette there so let's start with the neo color twos so our first color here is salmon pink so remember these are water soluble wax pastels or crayons so i'm just going to color in half of the swatch or a bit more than half of the swatch and then we'll come back with um water and see how they activate and we have Sahara yellow, which is kind of like this really nice buttery yellow colour. And we have light olive. And then we have moss green. And then olive. And then we have Prussian blue. And finally turquoise as a palette I actually really like these colors together as well okay I'm just gonna do the art graph stick at the end here it's a graphite stick so you can sort of like color with it draw with it do all sorts with it and it's water soluble as well Right, I'm actually going to go ahead and swatch out the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarels as well and then we'll come back and do the water for all of them together. So I'm going to first swatch out these five up here are the colours I had before. So I'm going to swatch those out really quickly there for you. So we start with the yellow. I can't remember the exact name of this one. Then we have green ochre. Then we have Crimson Aubergine. Then we have Dark Sap Green. And finally, for this first row, Sepia 10%, which is a really lovely sort of taupey grey colour. And then the new ones that I picked up were Violet Pink, Turquoise, Scarlet, light olive purplish red finally chestnut okay so let's go through and add some water to these colors i'm going to switch to this princeton neptune size 4 round brush okay so we start with the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle and you just see how easily and quickly and pigmented these are when they're activated. Just 
beautiful, beautiful colour. That was the yellow. Then we've got the green ochre, which is kind of like a green gold sort of colour. And then we have crimson aubergine. And then we have dark sap green, which is a very sort of blue leaning green. It's like a pine green colour. And then sepia 10%. This is, like I said, this is a really lovely sort of taupey, soft grey colour. Actually, this is a really nice one for sketching with if you're going to paint over it because it kind of just melts away and the colour isn't so strong that it's going to muddy up any of your watercolours or anything. It kind of just melts into the background. Then violet pink. Then we have turquoise. And scarlet. It's a lovely, rich, like red, red colour there. And we have light olive 40%, which is this really bright, luminous sort of yellow green colour which like a light olive as it says I actually quite like that one then we have purple red which is like a magenta and then finally we have chestnut which is a lovely rich warm brown kind of like a was like a burnt sienna type okay so that was the museum aquarelle now we'll move on to the Caran d'Ache Neo colour 2 this is the salmon pink and again you can see how beautifully these Activate and then Sahara yellow, and then we've got light olive, moss green, and then olive, Prussian blue, turquoise. And then now finally the art graph graphite stick so those are the museum aquarels and you see the lines underneath the pencil lines have mostly just melted away and then we have the neo color twos same with those most of the sort of lines from drawing it on has melted away and then the graphite stick back again the final set of things that need swatching and um, we're going to start with the Sennelier oil pastels so first up we have yellow ochre then we have midnight blue then we have violet ochre it's really creamy that one and then we have purple which is looks more like a magenta and then we have brown pink then we have sap green, which looks very dark, so I'm interested to see what that looks like. Okay, so definitely a dark sap green. And then we have Bordeaux, which is kind of like a wine colour. And finally, Prussian blue. If you hadn't guessed by now, Prussian blue is one of my favourite colours. Then we're going to do the Conte à Paris um, pastel pencils. Now the first one I have a bit of a problem with because the lead broke, which in and of itself, not a big deal, but I just can't find my pencil sharpener that fits this size pencil because these pencils are slightly bigger than your average. So I'm just going to do my best to swatch it with the little scrappy bit I have here. And this is number four. Okay. Just because I can't sharpen it, so I'm just using the little nubby bit. Um, and then we have number 12, which is this orange colour and for our red we have number three the numbering system doesn't seem to make a huge amount of sense then we have our pink which is number 11 then what looks like an ultramarine blue and that's number 46 we have a lighter blue which is I don't know I guess like a cyan or something it's number 29 more like a cerulean type colour and we have our dark green, which is number two. Our lighter green, which is number 44. And we have number 17, which is like a raw sienna type color. And then we have brown with number, which is number one. And our black, which is number nine. I'm not gonna swatch the white on white paper. Um, and then we have these two extras that I picked up. So this one is sepia and sanguine 
And then finally I also picked up a couple from Faber Castell from their Pit Pastels. So this is number 267, doesn't have a colour num name on it but it's a lovely sort of sap green colour. And then colour number 193. That's a lovely sort of pinky red. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. I also wanted to come back and show you the gouache dried on the black paper and I've labeled them all now as well. And actually that primary yellow has dried a lot more opaque than I expected. The ultramarine has dried pretty opaque. Even the primary blue has dried more opaque than I expected. And then obviously we have the other swatches that we did at the bottom here with the watercolors, the neocolor twos, museum aquarels all those and then our pastels on this paper okay so thank you so much for joining me today i um i have a feeling this is going to be a very long video i will try and cut it down as much as i can to make it um nicer to watch and not so long but i hope you enjoyed it it brought me a lot of joy to sit here and swatch out all these lovely colors and, uh, and yeah, I will be back soon with my first go at a gouache painting. So that should be interesting to see. <laughs> All right. I will see you guys again soon. If you enjoyed this video, um, please like, subscribe and leave me a comment. I look forward to speaking to you in the comment section. All right. Take care. Bye.